In this video, I demonstrate the very basics of setting up a destruction scene. There is a second part to this video that is a direct continuation from this project and demonstrates how to optimize the destruction scene for faster cooking performance and a couple of delay low techniques used for swapping low poly objects for higher resolution objects. Links in the description. I'm going to start off with the geometry node. Then we need a model. Uh, so for a test model, I'm going to start off with a rubber toy. So I'm going to be using this rubber toy and fracturing it into pieces in order to show you how to destroy it. So when you're doing destruction simulation, the pieces are actually pre-fractured. So it looks like it's cracking when, when something collides with it. When another object collides with, with this object, it looks like it's fracturing at that moment but it's actually pre-fractured ahead of time and the pieces are in the exact position seamless position so it looks like it's not it, it's a whole object and then when another object collides with it it will start to or the pieces the pre-fractured pieces will start to fall in different directions and this results in a, a destruction scene so this toy uh this rubber toy comes with materials it comes with materials um shaders textures i'm gonna delete it i'm gonna delete that just makes it a little easier so this would give me just the geometry now there's a node called the voronoi fracture node the voronoi fracture will cut this object into smaller pieces specified by its second input how many pieces and where the pieces are cut out of is determined by guide points that are plugged into the second input. It needs two inputs. One is the model that we're going to fracture, goes into the left input, geometry to fracture. And the one, the input on the right is points for Voronoi cells, basically the pieces. Where would, it needs um, a point to seed where to fracture. So let's let's drop down some random points. So let's scatter some points all over this rubber toy. I'm gonna change this to dark background so we can have a better look at it. You can see our rubber toy. This is the template. So you can see that the these scattered points are scattered all over the surface of this rubber toy. We then take these points, these scattered points. So there's a thousand of them and plug it into the right side. I'm actually going to lower this a little bit, make it 100, because I'm running, I'm recording while running this. I don't want it to be too heavy. So plug in the points into the right hand side of the Voronoi fracture. Let's see what happened. It looks like nothing happened. That's because the pieces are placed exactly in position. So it, it has a seamless connection between each piece. But in order to view our fractured pieces, you can drop down an exploded view. So the exploded view will take each piece and offset the position a little bit so we can actually see the pieces. So I'm going to connect this to the end of the fractured geometry, this output. There you go. Now we see our pieces. Now you can adjust this by um, adjusting the scale here if you want it to be further apart. And there you go, see? So this is the seamless connection because the pieces are placed exactly in, in position. And then when you move it out of position, you can start to see the fracture. Now there's something I want you to, uh, I want you to observe here. Let me make this a little bigger. These pieces are all on the surface. I don't have any pieces that are completely inside that are only from the inside. So every single piece here, these fractured pieces, all have surfaces, uh, exterior surfaces. Now, in order to illustrate that, I'm going to color the outside surface a different color from the inside surface. So you can have, you can distinguish the outside and the inside surfaces. In the Vernor fracture, it will fracture your model as well as give you uh, a lot of attributes. It will group the inside, inside primitives with the name inside, obviously, and then uh, the outside primitives, the name outside. So this is useful. So let's color this. 
Now I want to color the inside pieces. I'm going to give it like green. Now you can start to see it bleeding through because of the points. The points on the side are shared. So I'm going to change this to primitive. Then you won't see it at all. In order to illustrate that, let me explode view. Connect the explode view to the color. Render flag here. Now you're starting to see it. I'm going to make this a little larger. Now, all these pieces, every single piece has a surface. The white is the surface. The light grayish color is the surface primitive. Now, every single piece has a surface piece, uh, has a surface side to it. That's because our scatter, when we scattered, when we put this scatter node down, it's scattering on the surface, on the surface of our, of our geometry. Actually, I can turn the point size bigger. Okay. I'm going to turn the point size and make the dots a lot bigger. Now this is a lot more clear. All these points are on the outside, on the surface of this geometry. That's why when you fracture it here, these points, all, all these uh, pieces are all on the surface as well. Now what if I wanted fractured pieces of the inside as well. I want interior pieces as well. I, d I don't only, not only want them to fracture it on the surface. Well, then th we have to change the way how we scatter these points. Let's go back here. We know that a volume, if we turn this geometry into a volume, that will give us volume of the interior areas of the, the volume inside. So we can use that. For this attribute delete, let's add an ISO offset. This ISO offset converts our geometry, our rubber toy, into a volume. Here, the, the volume has no name right now, so it's uh, the volume primitive is zero, is named zero. We can give it a name. We can go like, yeah, rubber toy volume. So you can give it a name if you want. You don't have to. So the ISO offset will give it volume. It will give it depth. After the ISO offset, Put down the scatter node, template the geometry. The scatter points are now scattering in the interior as well. You can see some of them right inside there. I don't know if you can tell, but we'll be able to tell when we uh, render the Vorno, when we go to the Voronoi fracture. We'll, we'll see the pieces are inside. I'm going to increase uh, the the points, the point count. Let's do a thousand pieces now, a thousand points. Put the render flag on the foreigner fracture. I'm gonna turn this display off and put it off. Okay, it still looks like it, nothing has happened. That's okay because it, it's all the pieces are placed exactly in place. That's why we can't see it. So this will color it, explode view. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Now we can see that there's a lot of pieces in the interior as well. Let me explode this a little further. So there's a piece here. I'm gonna isolate it so we can have a better look. This one. Now this piece is completely green. There's no there's no gray primitive, like light grayish white primitive. So this is completely an interior piece. So that's the difference between how you uh you adding an ISO offset to scatter your points so you have interior points. Now this is good. We have a fractured geometry. So now that we pre-fractured our geometry, it's time to s import it into a simulation, into an RBD, a rigid body simulation. And I'm gonna turn off the render flag here because after the simulation is complete i'm going to be going back to this pre-fractured geo and adding a dop import and to extract all the data from the simulation so this simulation is only here to calculate to set up destruction simulation after it goes through all those calculations we bring it back into the fractured geo so i'm just gonna turn off the render flag we will need a dot net. That's the first thing. Let's go inside. Now we'll need an RBD object. But which RBD object? We have quite a few. Well, it's fractured, so we need an RBD fractured object.
for the corresponding RBD fractured object, we need a corresponding solver. So we have quite a few solvers. Which one would we need? RBD solver? You can use that one, or you can use a rigid body solver. I'm going to use a rigid body solver for this. Now the rigid body solver in here, you can actually choose RBD. I'm going to stick with bullet for now. So let's hook this up into the objects. Now I'm, I'm planning to drop this, my um, rubber, pre-fractured rubber toy onto the ground. I'm just going to simply drop it on the ground. So we'll need gravity, that means. Now for the RBD fractured object, it's asking for a SOP path. So that's the pre-fractured geo that we did. Um, so let's go back up. Now I do have a habit of importing all the object into this sim context first and then bring it in into the top net. So that's just a habit of mine. So I feel like it's more organized that way. So I'm going to drop down an object merge. Choose this out pre-fractured geo that I created before. I'm going to rename this node. Transform him into this object. So this, I'm going to change this to hide other objects. So I know exactly what's in this context. Now I'm going to add a null. So this is a habit of mine that I like to import everything into the simulation context before importing it into the .NET. I feel like this is more organized. You don't have to do this in order to have it functional. So let me go in here first. Let me show you how I hook it up first the RBD fractured object, the SOP path. So we're going to choose what we created before. Not this one, but this one under the SIM contacts. Under the SIM node, we created a out fractured geo. So that's what I choose. That's only because I created this, um, imported it into this context first. Now, if you don't want to do it like this, you can actually import it from the original original fractured geo geometry node and exactly from here you can just put this and select this node which is which i'll show you is this node which is this node you can directly import it using this node i just find that if you import it like in here as a beginner step as as your houdini projects grow things will get more complicated and you'll have a lot of different objects involved this seems to be a little more organized for something simple like this it it doesn't really show its uh, use case so we have the pre-fractured object in here so let's just let's just play it see what happens so it just falls it doesn't even hit anything because we don't have a ground so let's add a ground ground plane merge it into the simulation now remember you need to merge the ground plane from left to right so this crisscrossing is not good you need select the merge press up in order to reorder um, this so you don't want to crisscross these lines the ground plane needs to be merged from left to right so we're getting close and this is nice we have a ground plane unfortunately our pre-fractured rubber toy is overlapping the ground plane so let's lower the ground plane. Let's go negative two. Okay, there it goes. Okay, let's just play it again. Breaks apart, so it's doing something. It's working. Please check out the next video that is a direct continuation from this video. It'll take this project and add optimizations and add more details to the flatly sliced fractured pieces for rendering. I also demonstrate a couple of delay load techniques that will really improve the cooking time for the simulations. Links in the description. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.